Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? Well, good morning, and we love you, Jesus. What a great way to start Valentine's Day. Well, we thank everybody out there uh, watching us on YouTube as well as here in our sanctuary on this nasty, icy morning. We appreciate those people who got here safely and, and are here in our sanctuary as well as you guys at home, Sunday light. I believe the roads and everything will be okay by this evening, so they will be live streaming the 6 p.m. service on Facebook tonight, so there will be a 6 p.m. service uh, uh, this evening here in the sanctuary. Uh, we do have an official Facebook page. As a matter of fact, we've posted on that page today about the icy conditions, and stay home if you can, but uh, 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 we do have that official Facebook page now. Just Google us, it'll come up. We have the preschool, of course, is open now for registrations for two, three, and four-year-olds, and kindergarten enrichment. Please uh, email Holly Cook at that email address you see there, or call her at that number. That is the preschool number. Ash Wednesday is this week, Wednesday, of course. We will have three opportunities for ashes. There'll be a outdoor, two outdoor opportunities from 7 to 8 a.m. in the morning. That's for the commuters. And of course, at, uh, at noon to one, uh, those folks who may be out shopping or doing whatever they do uh, through the day. And we will have an Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday evening here in the sanctuary at seven. Well, good morning and, and welcome to worship everyone that made it out. And uh, I'm glad you got here safely. I hope you found that the parking lot was dry enough and not slippery or slippy as they say here in Pittsburgh. Uh, but happy Valentine's Day to all of you and all of you out there. Let us go to God in prayer. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I want to walk as a child of the light. Would you uh, please stand with me for our opening prayer this morning, our responsive opening prayer. <clears throat> Holy God, upon the mountain you revealed our Messiah, who by his death and resurrection would fulfill both the new law, both the law and the prophets. By his transfiguration, enlighten our path, that we, that may, we may dare to, to suffer with him in, in service, service of humanity, humanity and, and so, so share in the everlasting glory of him, of him who lives and reigns with you and the, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but holy Fails his lovely face, I rest on his changing grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all 
the ground is sinking sand His oath, his covenant, his blood Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way children in here today uh, so we want to talk to the children that are out there and uh, we just heard from our cherub choir and they sang happy valentine's day to you jesus loves me this i know right and uh, he is the author and the perfecter of our love and so he's the one that invests his life in us so that we might be able to love one another even as christ loved but today i want to talk to you about mountaintop experiences I want to talk to you about times in your life when you go somewhere with your family where everything is the best and you just want to stay there. You want to stay and remain in that place and, and never let it stop. You ever have times like that, kids? You ever have times like that, whether it's a birthday party or, or an expedition that your family went on or climbing a mountaintop or hiking or something like that? And it was so much fun that you didn't want to go back home. Well, in today's gospel message, we hear about the apostles that are with Jesus. And they go up on a mountain top to be with him. And it was a special time. Because Jesus wanted them to see the glory of God in Jesus Christ. And so they were with him. And as he was praying, he just changed right in front of them like Shazam! All of a sudden, Jesus was just filled with so much light that they couldn't bear to see. They had to kind of shield their faces because he was so dazzling white. There's no words to describe how white he is. He's probably like the sun, and they were like, whoa, we can't see. And then all of a sudden, there was Moses, and then there was Elijah, and they appeared with Jesus in this cloud. And all of a sudden... They disappeared. They were talking with Jesus for a while. Then Moses was gone and Elijah was gone. And all that was left was Jesus. Because Moses represented the law. Because he was the one, the giver of the law that God gave to him to give to the people. And Elijah symbolizes all of the prophets. And all of a sudden, the prophets and the law, they go away because in Jesus Christ, we have both the law and the prophets incarnate, in, in human flesh. And this cloud was around Jesus, 
And there was a voice from God the Father in heaven that says, this is my beloved son, my loved son, whom I love. Listen to him, listen to him. And that means obey him. And so Jesus was there all by himself now, and it was Peter that wanted to make tents. He wanted to make booths. They, they wanted to stay in that place because they didn't know what else to do. And it was so amazing that they just wanted to stay there. But Jesus knew they needed to get back down the mountain and get back to work in the ministry. Sometimes we're in places that it's so good to be there that we just want to stay. But God says, get back down the mountain, get back down the hill, and go back to work because that's why you're here. And Jesus knew that's why he was here, so he went back down the mountainside with his apostles, and the first thing he did was get back to work in ministry. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, that is who you are, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving. And you give us everything we need. You give us your word, you give us your spirit, you give us hope in all occasions, Lord. And on this Valentine's Day in 2021, we look forward to your love that you shed upon every one of us, your love that is manifest in our lives, your love that fills us with you and your spirit. Enable us by that love to be lovers of people, that we might uh, show your love to a nation, to a world, to a community that needs to see it. In all of these things, Lord, we pray in your most holy name, all to the glory of God the Father in heaven, by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Well, this is uh, Scouting Sunday. And normally we have a big scouting presence here, but I'll tell you what, by ratio, we have four of the scouts are here with us, and I want to invite Jason Cribbs to come on up and tell us about scouting in this area. We have a wonderful troop, Troop 111, uh, uh, Boy Scouts and, and, and Cub Scouts, and uh, they're just amazing. Come on up uh, and uh, tell us about scouting here. Well... Good morning, everybody. Um, as Pastor Tony stated, my name is Jason Cribbs, and I am the Scoutmaster of Troop 111. Um, you know, I, I think the the message um, that you know really needs to be conveyed um, is a, a heartfelt thank you from Troop 111 uh, to the church, to Pastor Tony, to the congregation, um, because without without the support. Um, and the foundation of the church, the, the Boy Scout program, doesn't exist. Um, one of the things that our troop is really proud of is at the top of our troop patch, it says 55 on it. And that's 55 years as a troop that we've been here. And actually, we're, we're beyond that. I think we're on year 57. Um, so, you know, as soon as we hit that 60th milestone, we'll get a little patch that says 60 years. But I think that really speaks volumes for the community and, and for the church um, because without the support, that doesn't happen. Um, I feel that um, we, we do have a great program for the boys. Um, uh, with, with the activities that we do, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I've always um, thought about is um, we, we have our scout law. And today, as Pastor Tony uh, has stated, we're, I'm joined with uh, Dave Middleton, um, our, one of our committee members, uh, his son, Zach Middleton, and Evan Cribbs, my son. Why don't you guys come on up? Great. Uh, with us here, Zach to my left, uh, Evan, and Mr. Middleton. So, you know, I, I think that we all want to say thank you for, for the support that the church gives. Um, one of the things that I'd, I'd like to do while we're here is uh, let's go ahead and say the Scout Law. 
As Scott is, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. All right, guys, you can have a seat. Thank you very much. So in, in, the, um, <clears throat> in the scouting program, that's our, our 12 points of the scout law, and we, we abide by those uh, 12 points. And, you know, I, I always wondered to myself, why would we put reverent as the 12th point? It, it just doesn't seem, you know, like it, it, it should be higher on the list, right? But in thinking about that, a scout as reverent is, is really the foundation of what scouting is. And then we put all the other 11 qualities that we, that we aspire to have on top of that. Without the, without the foundation, we don't have a, uh, a good organization. So I, I just feel that um, that is so critically important in our scouting program. And uh, once again, I, I just want to thank everybody in the church and the congregation and Pastor Tony uh, for allowing us to have this program and uh, to continue it for another 55 years. So thank you very much. May we pray for the scouting in this area and scouting all over the world. Lord God, we thank you for Jason. And we thank you for what he just brought to us about reverence uh, being the foundation. And really, when you think about it, the reverence is, is the foundation for our relationship in you. And so, Lord, we know that scouting reflects a great faith and, and great duty and great honor. And we just thank you for the scouts in this building, in, in this community, and in the world. We ask, uh, Lord, for you to bless our Troop 111 as you have over the many years, over the 55 years that you have had them in this place. And we ask, O oh Lord, that, uh, that you will raise up leaders in this world through the scouting program that takes place in this place. And now we uh, pray uh, for all of those future scouts and all of, the uh, all of the scouts that are now here and all the scouts that have gone before, all the wonderful Eagle Scouts that have been birthed in this place, Lord, we give you thanks. And now we ask your special blessing upon them as they move forward into the future. And, and keep on scouting. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Our uh, Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us from 2 Kings, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Hear these words. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elisha said to him, stay here, and the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And when they had crossed, Elisha said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit the double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. 
You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. And as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. And so ends this, the reading of his holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day and for all the opportunities that it offers us. We especially thank you for the opportunity we have this morning to come together as the body of Christ. Whether we are sitting together in this room or whether we are worshiping together but in separate places, but when we join together as your body, we find that we are part of something far greater than our individual selves. Without other Christians in our lives, we are only fragments of what you intended us to be. As we heard from 2 Kings chapter 2, Elisha learned how to be a prophet from his mentor Elijah. So when the mantle was passed and Elijah was taken up to heaven, Elisha was ready not to go out on his own, but to go back into the midst of your people as your servants. Father, we want to be like the prophets. We want to speak your word and tell others that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. But as Elisha knew, we can't mature and thrive apart from your body of Christ. Here in the church, we experience community and family and precious relationships. It is a safe place where we can grow and be free from all the diversions that our world tries to force on us. Thank you, Father, for the mentors we have found in this place. We all have a duty to model you to our families, our church, and our society. But the question is, are we making progress? And are we pleasing you? One day we will also pass the torch on to others to advance your kingdom here on earth. Until that day, Father, we pray that we would stay focused on your glory and become a valuable part of others' journeys with you. Father, we are grateful that as we worship, as we worship you, we can also come before you and share our heartaches and our anxieties with you. We pray for your healing presence and your peace with those who are sick. Comfort those who are grieving. Help us to love each other as your son has showed us. Guide our nation and our world through these uncertain times. Be with our churches and our workplaces and our schools. Hear us now as we join together and pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, use me, Lord, use even me, just as 
as thou wilt and when and where until thy blessed face I see thy rest thy joy thy glory Our stewardship nugget for this morning comes to us from Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 12 through 14. Hear these words. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. In the second giving of the law, Moses was telling the people that they needed to follow the law. The law that he was giving them, the law that God had given to him to give to the people. And he says, don't turn from the right or don't turn from the left. Don't follow other gods. And if you continue to follow God, he will continue to bless you with a bounty. And uh, if you fall away, then you will find out that it will be less than. God has made us to be a blessing to be a blessing to the world. God blesses us so that we might be a blessing in our lives. Would the ushers come forward and and bring us our gifts that we have received? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Gracious God in heaven, we thank you for your graciousness. We thank you of the ways that you give to us that we aren't even aware of. Every every gift that we have, even the breath that we draw, is a gift from you. And so, Lord, we thank you for the many and the varied gifts that you have given to us, and we return a, a mere portion back into your hands here this morning. We ask that you would bless these gifts that have been given. Bless also all those that bring them that together we may honor you in everything that we do. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen.
Thank you, Dan. And to think we almost missed that. <laughs> now, would you please stand with me for the hearing and the reading of this morning's gospel message that comes to us from where? <laughs> from Mark's gospel. The ninth chapter, verses 2 through 9. Hear these words. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up on a high mountain where they were alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now he did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had been risen from the dead. And so ends this, the reading of his holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. And I invite you to pray along with me, please. God of grace, God of glory, God of promises and God of promises kept. You, you told the disciples that they would see the kingdom of God before they would die, and they certainly did. They saw you manifest for the glory, the Shekinah glory that you have. And so, Lord, uh, we come before you this morning, and we thank you for the word that you have given to us in this gospel reading this morning. We thank you for the readings from Deuteronomy and, and, and the reading about Elijah from 2 Kings. We ask that you would take each of these readings and emblazon them upon our hearts that we might remember them in a way that we might be enlightened, that we might be inspired, that we might want to go back to work even though we may be on mountaintops sometimes. Help us to get back into the daily grind and do the things that you intend for us to do, that we might be the people of God. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Well, you ever notice when we have uh, lectionary readings that we read uh, uh, as, as the practice in the church, uh, you ever wonder where they start and stop the verses? I do. Uh, today's reading is from Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter, verses two to nine, and it starts this way in the second verse. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. My question is, well, what happened before those six days? What was important about what had happened in the life of the disciples before those six days? Well, one of the things that took place was that Jesus was asking his apostles, who the people say that I am? Do you remember that? Who do people say that I am? And, and you know, said, some said, some say Elijah. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Come back from the dead. Yes, but who do you say that I am? And it was Peter that pipes up. He's, Peter says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. Blessed are you, Peter. For man has not revealed this to you, but your father in heaven. And, and so Peter's, you know, he's pumped up. You know, he, he, he just said, you're the Christ, you're God in the flesh, you're the Son of God. And Jesus says, you're right and blessed are you. And Peter's got to feel so great. You know, his, his chest is pumped out. I, I know I would be. My, my dad used to say when I was a young, young lad, he would say, never tell Anthony that he did something well. Because his head would swell. 
You know, and, and then he, would, he just falls down because his head gets too big for his shoulders. And he said that one time when I was, uh, Dan, I used to play classical piano. I, I studied from Mrs. Lavalier and I took the classics. And, and my sister Paula and my sister Melinda and myself, we would go to piano lessons every week. Now I have to confess, I didn't practice all the time. Uh, God kind of gifted me and I could look at the music and I could just kind of sit down and play it. And play it pretty decently. And my sisters couldn't do that. They practice hard and they practice hard. And so then I would go and I would go for my lesson and they'd give me the gold star and, give me the, and they'd give me praise. And what I didn't realize was Mrs. Lavalier was turning up the heat and she was giving me uh, more uh, harder music to play and, and separate runs on the left hand and runs on the right and crossovers and all kinds of crazy things like that. And I did my normal practice and all of a sudden I didn't have such a good lesson. And that's what my dad says. You can't tell Anthony he's doing a good job because his head will swell. That's where Peter's at. Peter's head is swollen because Jesus himself had given him accolades. That a boy, you're the one, you know, you know what's going on. And momentarily, right after that, about five minutes, when Jesus is telling them about him having to go to the cross and that they themselves would have to take up their own crosses to follow him. See, there's a cost of discipleship. Peter's like, no, may it never be. No, you can't. And Jesus stops him in mid-tracks. And what's he say to him? Get thee behind me, Peter? No. Get thee behind me, Satan. Because your concern's about the things of this world and the things of man and not the things of God. Wow, what a come down, huh? What, how, how to come down from, from this high. And Jesus goes on to tell the apostles in the ninth chapter, verse 1. He says, look, it truly I tell you, verily I say to you, that there are some among you that stand here which shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God appear. Wow. So they're standing there and they're giving this information and now six days later they go up this mountaintop. They go up with Peter, James and John, the sons of thunder, and they go up to this mountaintop for Jesus to pray. He takes them all. These are the inner circle, of, by the way, the disciples. And they're there with, with Jesus. And then suddenly, is what the scripture says, suddenly, he's transformed, he's transfigured before their eyes. It's like in an instant. H have you ever been in a place when all of a sudden something dawns on you and it's like the scales are lifted from your eyes and all of a sudden you realize this is what it is. And suddenly you have an understanding of what's going on. It's Valentine's Day today. And, and uh, Dottie and I knew each other. We worked together and uh, we actually lunched together. Uh, and I think she was in love with me. But... I didn't know that at the time, but we went to this one event and suddenly I realized, oh my goodness, I'm in love with this girl. I didn't know that before that. Dottie kind of knew it, but I didn't know it. It was like the scales came from my eyes. Suddenly I realized that she was the one for me. Today, the gospel message, the apostles suddenly realized Wow, this is Jesus. He's God's son. Now, Peter had just said that, but now they're seeing it with their own eyes. They're seeing this Shekinah glory. They can't actually look at it because it's too bright. And they see this image of Moses and this image of Elijah. Moses representing the law. Elijah representing all the prophets. We heard about Elijah today in the 
first reading. And you have to wonder what took place right before Elijah was showing Elisha the ropes. You know, we're talking about mountaintop experiences. And when you think about mountaintop experiences, and you look in the Old Testament, there's all kinds of mountaintop experiences. I think about Abraham, who went up on a mount, Mount Moriah, because God said to sacrifice his son, his only son. And Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him as righteousness. And he takes his son up this mount. His son says to him, Dad, we have, we have the fire. We have the wood. But where is the sacrifice? God will provide it. God will provide it. And when they went up and he was following what God had told him to do, God recognized that he wasn't going to withhold his only son. And God did provide. And there was a ram that was stuck in the thicket. And there on Mount Moriah, God provided. And it was counted to righteousness for Abraham. Moses goes up on Mount Horeb. And, and uh, remember we talked about that, where all the earth is shaking and he's giving this Mount Sinai and he's giving all of this stuff. And he comes down with the Ten Commandments and he tells people, you need to follow these. Jesus goes up on this mount, this mount of transfiguration, Mount Hermon. And he's there before his disciples and uh, he's letting them know this is God's glory. This is the kingdom of heaven. We were talking about Elijah. Elijah was on Mount, he was on Mount Carmel. Remember that? He, he had the, the big showdown with the prophets of Baal. And, uh, and he had prepared this showdown so that he could show his God off, the God of Israel, and the gods that they uh, worshipped weren't really gods at all. And he made fun of them when they couldn't get their God to react and light a flame uh, for their sacrifices. And he would say to them, well, your God must be out in the, in the loo. He must be out back. He must be out doing something. And finally, when it comes Elijah's turn, God shows up and, and all of a sudden he defeats all the prophets of Baal. Jezebel hears about this victory. He, she hears about all her prophets and she testifies that she's going to get him killed. She's going to take his life. And all of a sudden, this, this powerful prophet of God is afraid for his own life, and he runs. And he runs to another mount. And he's listening for God. He says to God in his, his prayer to God that I am the only one left. I'm the only one left. God says to him, no, I've reserved 7,000 prophets in my name. You're not the only one left. Elijah hears God speak to him in a still, small voice. There was an earthquake that took place. There was a storm that took place. There was lightning. There was thunder. There was this. God wasn't in any of those things. But finally, God shows up to Elijah, and he says, Elijah, what are you doing here? And that's when Elijah says, I'm the only one left. I'm done. I'm, I'm beat. I'm, no, you're not the only one left. I've reserved 7,000 people, prophets. And then he sends them from that place down the mountain to get back to work. And the work that he had to do was the work we just read about this morning. The work of bringing the message to all the other prophets. Remember, he had reserved all these prophets. We saw a company of 50. He went to Bethel. There was prophets there. It was prophets everywhere. And there was also Elijah, who was also a prophet, under Elijah's tutelage. Now, Jesus is up on this mount, this mount of transfiguration. And he appears before them in his full glory. And there's, 
Moses, there's Elijah, and then all of a sudden, they're gone. They're gone from Peter, James, and John's sight. And the only one left is Jesus, who actually is both the law and the prophets and God, all rolled up into one, the kingdom of heaven. And they see it, and, and they don't know what to say. You know, their eyes are open, and they see this miraculous thing that God had promised them through Jesus just six days before. They don't know what to say. And Peter's been burnt before. <laughs> so he says, Lord, it would be good for us to stay here and build you some booths, build us places, one for Eliza, one for Moses, and one for you. He didn't know what he was saying. He really didn't know what he was saying. Because they weren't to just remain there on that mountaintop. They weren't to remain there in that mountaintop experience. They needed to get back down, and they needed to go to work. But Jesus kept his promise that some standing there would not taste death until they saw the kingdom of heaven coming. And there it was before them for their eyes to see, although it probably hurt. Suddenly, they came to an awareness that Jesus is God, that he incorporates the law and the prophets, and then these words from the Father in heaven, this is my beloved Son, whom I love. Listen to him. I often say to parents all the time, when you say to your children, listen to me, what are you really saying? Obey me. Obey me. And that's what Jesus is, that's what God, the Father, is saying about Jesus. Listen to him. Obey him. Follow his laws. Follow his decrees. And you will live. And you will live a better life than you could ever have imagined. Suddenly, the eyes became aware. And yet, they wanted to stay there. But Jesus knew they needed to get back down and they needed to go to work. And that's the same with us today. We need to get back down and we need to go to work. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, that is who you are. Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving. And you show us glimpses from time to time, aha moments in our lives, where we get it, where we understand that you really are God and that you really have invested your life in us and that you have really given us your Holy Spirit so that we have everything we need, your law, your spirit, your words incorporated in you. We have everything we need, Lord. We don't have an excuse. So give us courage to go back down the mountainside and get to work. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to follow your laws and your decrees so that we might be your people, that you might be our God. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is uh, hymn number 717. Mine eyes have seen the glory. Watch.
fires of the hundred circling camps they have builded him an altar in the evening dew and damps i can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps his day is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah his truth is marching on he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat he is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat oh be swift my soul to answer be jubilant my feet our god is marching This uh, Bible that my wife gave me when we got married and uh, it was the first King James version of the Bible I ever had I grew up in the Catholic Church and we had 72 books in the Bible not 66 but I got this book and it was a blue leather and it had silver coating all around here the silver's kind of worn off through the years and I determined I was going to read this from cover to cover from the front page to the back and so one day, as I was concluding, I was going to finish the Bible that day, I was in our bedroom. Dottie was downstairs. She was making breakfast. It was early morning. And I was reading through Revelation when all of a sudden the shaft of light came through the window, lit upon this page, lightened it up in such a way that all of a sudden what I was reading was suddenly I realized everything that God was saying to me. And it all made sense. And I thought, wow, I know what it's all about. 
I really do, and I can't wait to share it. And then <clears throat> as quickly as it came all into being, it kind of went, went away. It came back in years and things like that, but <clears throat> the thing is that there are times when we are in this word that we have these aha moments, we have these suddenly moments that God's spirit is manifest in us in such a way that he opens our eyes so that we might see his truth and that we can incorporate it into our lives. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He really, really is. And he really intends for us to have a full life, to have it to the full. He means for us to have everything and to be at the top and not the bottom. Never to be a, a borrower, but, a, or a, but just a lender. God wants us to have it all. Not from a prosperity gospel standpoint. I mean his blessings so that we can be a blessing in the world. This, this book has blessed me. In the years after that, I've had NIV books, NRSV books. I've read all kinds of Bible versions. But this is still very special to me. What about your aha moments? When has God opened your eyes? Pray for that so that you might see the glory of the coming of the Lord. Go in his peace. Go in his love and share his life through your life with him in you. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember, our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life, and that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy, and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you, and we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.